Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm here with Cass and Eddie. Uh, and today Gary, we're going to be... Gary, Gary. Gary, Gary sorry. <laughs> uh, there was an Eddie, right? Yeah, there was yeah, Eddie, there Eddie was. couldn't make it. Yeah. He couldn't make it today, but... We're got... thinking of you, buddy. <laughs> Miss you. Hey, but we're here today, and we're going to talk about some essential things for your snakehead fishing. I know you guys obviously fish a lot down in Blackwater, that whole Dorchester County, everywhere, really, right, Cass? Yeah, yeah, You're all over the place. Yeah, I am, I am, I am. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the essentials here, and who else in Cass? Who's been doing it here for a long, long time? I mean, I'm sure you were the first one. Like, first one, 2009. Right? 2009, yeah. I caught the first one Eastern Shore. So. Right. So he's seen it all. And uh, take it away. Tell, talk to yeah. talk to us about yeah, a little so, couple so, things here. So you know, so me and Gary and Eddie, you know, we've got the Blackwater's Edge podcast. We do a lot of talking every week about Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge and the surrounding areas and around the bay to try to let people know, you know, where you can go and you can catch a snakehead. So a lot of people say, well, Kaz, what do I need to have with me if I'm going to go snakehead fishing? Well. You really need kind of a good bit of things to oh, go yeah. and be successful. You know, you just can't go out there with your fishing rod, a bobber, and a bucket of bait, and you're done. You know, there's a lot more that goes into snakehead fishing. It's not as cut and dry as, as other fishing. You know what I mean? Like not other right. fishing, they can you out. So, you know, you're going to come down to Blackwood. You're going to go fishing. First thing you got to think about is where are you going to fish? So, you know, you've got bridges, and a lot of people are at the bridges. So sometimes it's tough to get that spot out there at one of those bridges. You know, literally, folks, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of little nooks and crannies that nobody's even touched down there, even oh, yeah. found yet, you know? That's the good thing about where we're on Dorchester County. There's just so many opportunities there to come down and get them. And you guys are starting to see so much up here now mm -hmm. that you guys are really taking off in the snakehead market, Oh, too. yeah. We've got a lot of little local areas here just taking yeah. off, like you said, but... So, so if I'm going to come down Blackwater and I can't get on a bridge, the first thing that I'm going to want to have is something to hold my rod, okay? So if I'm going to be sitting on a roadside somewhere, you know, a snakehead could be 15, 16 pounds. You don't want to leave your rod laying on the ground, especially that nice 300, oh, 400 hour yeah. combo you just picked up here at Angler Sports Center, oh, you know, especially yeah, them Shimano yeah. lines, they're amazing. So, uh, you know, so you want to have something to put in the ground to keep your rod, your rod secure so you don't lose that stuff. Right, Gary? Right. We've lost many rods in the beam because we just didn't know what we were doing. So, those two last year? Yeah, those two last <laughs> year. snake just take it, takes yeah. down there, right? You know, I mean, sometimes when we get going, we'll have, you know, three, four rods down. I have a hook and line right. license. I can have as many as I want, but I don't do that. You know, we want to let everybody have an opportunity to fish there, you know? So, uh, so you know, the next thing you're going to want to have is what are you going to catch them on? Okay, so, you know, you buy lures and you can buy lots of different kinds of lures to catch snakeheads. Uh, you know, me and Gary and Eddie, we've always tried to promote, you know, we want to make sure you go home successful. So mm -hmm. if you're going to come down there and roll the dice all day on a bait, it just may be that day that you're just not successful, you know? So I exactly. always have minnows, snakehead destroyers from the bait boys oh, right yeah. here, which are available Best here at Angler Sports yep. Center. Uh, we always have them on hand for us to make sure that not only us, but anybody that we're taking or anybody we're catering to also has that same opportunity. So Gary, talk a little bit about you know, the, the bucket they want to have and an aerator, why it's important. If it's if you're coming down for a one-time thing or just a weekend, you can do it with one of these, it's fine. It's, a, you know, you just, what I would do is put a little ice in there with it because it doesn't have an aerator. And for three ninety nine, yeah. it's worth that to have that oh, yeah. added you insurance, you know. Yeah. And, you can, and, and it's just and you can change the water out too. That's the main thing. Every, every 20 minutes, especially if it's sitting in the sun every 15, 20 minutes, Dump the water out, put new water in. If you, you know, you're fishing on the water, so you should be able to have some kind of access to it. If, you, if you're going to fish more frequently, you can get something like this. Same thing. Nice thing with this, you pull it out of the water, you turn it, it's got holes in the back, dumps all the water out so you can see everything in the creek down in there. Get a minute he's in there, i got to wait. And then you put it back, you throw it back in the water, it's weighted so that it lays on its back and it fills itself back up. So you, you can pick it up and set it, and it'll hold water about that high. So if you're moving from one place to another, yep. works, works really good. Once the weather gets warm, you got to have an area. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to have a bait bucket. You're going to have a bucket by itself, you know, or a cooler. You know, you're going to spend a little bit more money to, to make something like this. That way you can keep those minerals alive. And the reason you want to do that is, you know, our water down there, Gary, and you and me both know that, it can be as warm as over 100 degrees. Oh, yes. We've seen it, as, oh, it, we've seen it oh, 104 yeah. degrees, believe it or not, in some of the, the low-lying waters in those marsh areas. Well, just feel that. We've been sitting here five yeah. minutes. Yeah. Oh, it's hotter than everything else around yeah. here. I mean, no, I've yeah. seen it, yeah. yeah. So, so, so bucket-wise, you know, you want to stay away from a dark-colored bucket. You know, you want to stay yeah. with a light-colored bucket uh, you so you're not absorbing the sunlight. A white one or, or a blue one or something like that. And I, and I put a lead on it. I don't snap it down, but I put it on there, and I'll punch a couple holes in it. Because that way, if you put it in your car and you take off down the road, 
when the water splashes up, it doesn't come through the holes per se, but it keeps it from flowing out all over the trunk of your car or your back of your car. And, and another good thing about a bucket with a lid is it eliminates having to bring a chair with you. So now you have you a place sit to sit. <laughs> so now you don't have to spend forty dollars on another chair. You can get and all this good stuff here at Angler. You, you guys, know? you guys have got the nice bin of buckets that are styrofoam bucket inside. Uh -huh. Mr. Bubbles, yeah. Well, that's right, Mr. Bubble ones. They're, they're really nice. I mean, if you're going to fish a lot and you're going to use bait, that's the ticket. Yeah, might as well make that investment, right? And yeah. get, get the nice bucket in there. You know, you, you can't cut corners here when you're yeah. snakehead fishing, you know? Uh, well, when you bait, you, you got to keep it alive. They don't, they don't eat dead men. <laughs> yeah. Well, they do, but then they're really, really hungry. Yeah. <laughs> but, but for the most part, the whole idea is, and, and it's not just that your bait's alive, it's that it's lively. Exactly. Big thing. That's why I say put a little ice in there. We used to take our, our minnows when I was a kid, and we'd put them up. We had a little cooler. My dad made a wire to get in the bottom, and we'd put our minnows on a wet towel. We soak the towel in water, and we put it... Fold it up so it would just fit in the cooler and put a layer of minnows and roll it over, put a layer of minnows. And and with them being cold like that, when you put them in the water, they just come alive. Yeah. So I mean, when the first warm day. A lot of, a lot, a lot do of folks don't know, but, cold, but, but, but cold uh, to warm a, a mama chog is a mud minnow, you know, yeah. so they have lungs and they can breathe they air. Can, yeah, exactly. As long as you keep them wet, you know, yeah. you can transport Moisture, them and right? use yeah. them like that, right? If they dry out, just like anything else, it's done. But again, like Gary's saying, if you got a cool pack or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to stack them in a bucket two feet deep. Just want to, you know, maybe cut, you know, a pint, you know, put it at the bottom, right, right. put a nice little wet cloth over the top, you know, yeah. put a little cool pack maybe underneath so you of them. So you kind of do like eels and stuff yeah, like yeah, that, exactly. right? You just exactly. keep them cool. Can yeah, you reach in there and pull out one of them minutes. Let's show, let's show them what a snakehead destroyer looks like from the bait holes. And they're big. Damien, they're you are doing eats. a great job. You've been helping us out here for a couple years right, now. Up and, my, uh, up my. Oh yeah, look at that thing. <laughs> there he is. Look at that thing. It's it's big. And they're lively. I mean, they're lively. These, these things so are the most hardiest the bait cool. out there, you know? If that water was 85 degrees, he wouldn't hardly be moving. It's, it really helps to keep the water cool. That's a big thing. And I know you were talking about those tablets uh, earlier. Some, some like... Oh, oxygen tabs, yeah, yeah. I call them. You know, it's just like a little... It's like a, it's like an Alka-Seltzer in the water. Exactly. Yeah. Fish. So I'm sure that helps a lot, too. Yes. You know, yeah. we have and you guys have them available, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing that the bubbler does. It mm -hmm. just oxygenates the water. A couple little tricks in there for you know, for your bait and whatnot, uh, but other than that, I mean, any other types of like is live bait you guys you yeah, like to I mean, use down there? Yeah, so I mean, like if you can get your hands on what they're eating, you know, mm -hmm. a, a white perch. Um, you're gonna laugh when I tell you this. A brown bullhead catfish about four I've or five inches, I've you know. Seen it, yeah. Um, an eel. Um, you can't hook snakes. That a guy the other day yeah. ran into down there had a snake on the hook and said, "Hey, buddy, you're in Blackburn National Wildlife." <laughs> Let me tell you what: if you get caught throwing that water snake out there, oh, you're gonna have some problems. So just remember that. Whatever you're using for bait, make sure that it's legal. You just can't flip up a rock and use whatever's under it for bait. You know, you might be hurting the resource mm -hmm. or something like that. So always keep that in mind. Um, I like white perch sometimes. I know you you use minnows, yeah. grass shrimp. This is something that people okay. don't know really? about. Yes. So Blackwood National Wildlife Refuge. And I'm gonna talk about Key Wallace. You're very familiar yeah, with that yeah. spot. Course, so, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's a very, very hot spot for snakeheads, and it's got a riprap shoreline that goes down the whole place. Mm -hmm. The grass shrimp come in there in March. Okay, that, a lot of folks don't know. When your perch are coming in and they're running these runs, they time it with shrimp. So they have something to eat. If you look in the stomachs of yellow perch and fine, white right? perch, it's all grass shrimp, you know? So the snakeheads have learned in Blackwater over time, you know, as they're eating out resources and, we're, and some is being removed, they're replacing those resources that they need by other species. Right. This is what makes them an invasive species. We're not gonna get into all that, but I just wanna point that out. So we were at Key Wallace one day, we were filming with MPT. And I'm sitting there watching, I kept seeing snakeheads come up and almost like get on their nose and oh. scrape the rock. Huh. And I didn't know what they were doing. So. I went and got my net out of the car. Gary was there. I said, I wonder if there, there's something in them rocks they're trying to get out. And I thought maybe it was little blood worms. It might have been may worms because it something was may, right, you know? Yeah. And all the may worms get blown in there too. So uh, I took the net and went down the rocks and it was that deep in grass shrimp. Oh, so kidding. those same day we went home, we opened our fish up. All of them had just a knot of grass shrimp that was either starting to decompose or right. was completely decomposed. So we learned that sometimes a well, minnow is not just the only thing. You can take exactly. some grass shrimp and pop that over top of the minnow. Now they got a smorgasbord out there to eat, and they can't say <laughs> no to that. You know what I mean? It's the old master hatch. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, you know, last exactly. year, n nobody ever had one before. Last year, they had the locust lures because the locusts were, were uh, they're seven year, 14 year, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They come. And, and guys were tearing them up up this way. Yeah. And we, we don't have them down on the shore. We have them, but not. Yeah, no, no, like no, 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 no,
And, and you know, I mean, it just comes down to if you can find something there that's their natural forage and you can present it to them, you're Don't definitely going to have a good opportunity oh, yeah. to hook up and have something to eat. You know what I mean? Um, you know, we're talking about the minnows. We want to talk about how do I rig my minnows? Exactly. You know? Um, so, we got this uh, so, rig right here. So, the, the hook that I like to use is an Eagle Claw one off bait holder hook. I know I have the nastiest fingernails in the world. I'm sorry, I'm a waterman. <laughs> I like it because it has the barbs here. And what that does a lot of times is these snakeheads, if you're a seasoned snakehead fisherman, you know, if you don't set the hook till you see the bubbles, exactly. especially when you're bait fishing. So when that bobber goes down or he's pushing it around, he does not have that in his mouth. Mm -hmm. A lot of times he's just got it, just tasted it like, hey, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And then once he commits and says, yeah, I know, and swallows that thing down there, these little barbs here, will prevent it from coming out if he doesn't have this lodged in his lips. But It'll give you a minute to set that, set that, set that, and time, get it right, 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 okay? So remember that if you're fishing bait, bubbles. Wait till you see the bubbles. It's hard to count to three. Oh, it's hard not to set the hook. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's hard not to set the hook. Well, you know right? Oh, no, I'm famous for it. The biggest mistake that I see that people make with snake is, is they don't set the hook. They pull it along. I tell, I, when I, anybody's fishing with me and I tell them when I see those bubbles, I tell them, pull his head off. Yeah. You know, if you, if you come in and you got nothing you but the hook, right? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. but you got to set that hook. They're, it's hard to get a hook set up. Right, and I mean, and I never why. pull like, up either. They're bony, I never right? pull yeah. back. Always pull to the side or down. Never pull back because you'll pull it right out of his mouth. You want to hook him up? Yeah, I'm going to show him how we hook him up. Now, I got a bobber here. We'll talk about that in a minute, what you want to use after, you know, after this one. This yeah. So, so this, is, this is a snakehead destroyer from the Bay Boys. And the way you're going to rig this thing is if you look here, you know, I don't know if I can get on fingernails, but right here in their lips, they've got this real soft spot. See how I'm pulling that open right there, and you can see that little soft spot right there between his lips and his head. See that? I'm gonna bring the hook right through that little soft spot right there, right? And the reason I'm gonna do that is because that allows this minnow to live a long, long time. Another thing, you know, everybody wants to always hook their fish in the tail. Yeah. When a snakehead hits a bait, it's Sorry. gonna hit it head first. Exactly. Okay? Yep. So, when you're hooking the tail, you're making your fish weak. You're going to go through much more bait. Mm -hmm. Look, we want to sell bait, but we don't want to make them spend $100. Exactly. You know? So, we want to try to teach them the most effective way yeah, more to use the bait yep. so they're not wasting money. So, that's what you're going to do with your, with your snakehead destroyer. And the same thing goes along the lines with most other fish. You'll see that little soft spot in between the nostrils up there. And that's where you want to plug that hook through to keep your bait alive, no matter what you're using. So uh, here, Gary, let's save this for a rainy day. We like to recycle stuff. Gary, you want to eat them now? You hungry? Uh -huh. <laughs> How much you get if I eat this live on camera? Another one. <laughs> you know, I'm crazy enough to do it. So, <laughs> so now I've got my men, I've got my hook situated. The reason I use this one odd hook is this, this seems to be, for me, it's been the most effective and the most connected. Effective and connected. We see if they want to use that for slogan self talk. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this has been great for me. People ask me about circle hooks. That's a no, no, no with snakeheads. Mm -hmm. well, let me explain to you why. Most of our fish in Maryland have a round mouth. So that circle hook lodges up in the corner. You look at a snakehead's face in the shape of its head, it's, it's almost good. like a missile. Right. Right? It's rounded in the front. Pointy. So a lot of times when you go to set that circle hook, it just does not grab. Again, this is, is, is all I use, so, and that's, that's no bull. So let's talk about bobbers. I like an inch and a half bobber. I don't like to go real, real big, you know. I don't want too much resistance. I want to try to make my setup as easy on the snakehead as I can. I don't want him, I don't want to throw no flags his way. You know what exactly. I'm saying? So, so when he goes to pull that minnow down, it's you want you want as least resistance resist. as, you want, as possible. Basically, you want a bobber small enough that when you throw your minnow over, he'll probably pull it under yes. for a couple seconds. It's like you don't want to do the jealous thing. You don't need another barrel. Exactly. You know, you, you want it as light as possible to, to just stay above the water. why you don't want the resistance. Yeah, no resistance at all. Why? Because it'll spit it out, right? Well, yeah, exactly. they'll, they'll feel like yeah. it doesn't feel real. I mean, here's the thing. Snakeheads are smart. Look, I'm going to give it to them. They are mm -hmm. the smartest fish I have come across in my entire history of fishing. They have color memory six months old. I've got the data that I've done on tests to show that. Six months later, they remembered what a red lure was and would not bite it. So what does that tell you? You know, a, a lot of these fish get hooked and they get thrown back. It's hard, it's hard to catch oh, yeah. them fish again. You know, they will not eat something other than what's there, you know? the summer goes on to catch them if you're in, in places that people fish for. That's why I say get off the bridges .com. Check it out, you know? <laughs> so uh, I like to use a weighted bobber. And everybody says, Kaz, why do you like a weighted bobber? Okay, when I have a straight bobber, and just try to envision this in the water. When I have a straight bobber and I'm pulling it, 
Watch how much swing is on that. See how much swing's on that, Alex? Mm -hmm. I'm moving that bait every time I hit this. It's probably pulling this up. I might have a half inch swing here, but I'm probably pulling this four inches every time I snap that bobble. So, what I like to do, and an old timer taught me this years ago, the weighted end of the bobber, okay, you're gonna take this and you're gonna just wrap that around the bottom, okay? And then you're gonna leave it sitting like that. Now watch, when that snake, when I pull this bobber, there's only maybe a quarter inch to an eighth inch of movement here. I'm only moving this bait an inch and a half to two inches instead of four inches and pulling it out of the strike zone and making them work for it. Gotcha. I want to be as, as, yeah, as convenient cool. to yeah. them as I can be. I want them to eat the bait, you know? So I got to do everything I can yep. to make them think that it's, it's the way it's supposed to be. So, you know, again, everybody does different stuff. Corn flour, he likes a jig head, you know? Um, some guys, they like a, a big off, offset shank hook or a worm hook, you know, things like that. No matter what hook you're going to choose, you've got to have something here that's strong. You know, that thin wire, and I'm not knocking Gamagot, so oh, you no, can't use a 5 aught or a, a 2 aught worm hook with a minnow because the wire is just so thin it's not going to hold them. Hence, this is what I love about you guys. You're always supporting local companies. So there's lots of local products here that are beefed up, that aren't available as a standard opportunity in the market. So you can come here to Angles, you can find lots of other stuff besides minnows, you know? to buy here yeah, and you're going to find everything. stuff that's yep. made specifically yep. for, for snakeheads snake and they're going to hold them if you get a 20 pounder you're going to get it you know last week corn flour got one 18 and a half pounds down in a pond on the side of the river okay so the fish are out there they're big they're huge it's all about time and when they eat they all eat it's about being there and when they eat they all eat you got this in your hand you're going to be doing something i can tell you that right now um you know some other things we want to talk about after we're done you know with hooking up and what we're going to use for bait you know, what do we do when, when we catch a snakehead? Uh-oh, man, I got one on the hook right here. I don't have nothing with me. Look, let me tell you what happened to my thumb. All right, snakehead did that to my thumb, all right? So, you know, it's attachable. Now, you don't want that to happen to you, you know? You ever seen them teeth in their mouth? They I've are voracious, them. you know They've what I'm been, saying? They've got a few scars from them. The thing yep. is, they, they can almost lock their jaw when they bite you. So, Gary, when, when we catch one, the first one we want to have is what? A pair of grippers. Yep. Exactly. Oh, need a net. <laughs> we didn't bring one out, but you need yeah. a net. <laughs> this will not work. <laughs> yeah, and you want a pretty good size net too. You want something uh, big enough to be able to put a 20 pound fish in. But then you take the grippers and you can grab them by the mouth. And, and these, basically, you, you pull this back, it opens up. I can't, I don't know if I can get it to. Now, yeah. when, when you push this down, that, yeah, that opens up, and then you just let it go, and it bit, automatically and hooks the fish for you. You pull that back, and then when you let go, it locks. You can hold on to the handle. And, and pretty much the fish is on there. He's not going to get off unless you rip his mouth apart. Yeah, Gary, he swallowed my bait. What am I going to do next? Cut the line to rebate. <laughs> no, you're not. Get in there and get that bait back. Yeah. You got to go get one of these little cast toys, see? Looks just like cast. Put a little red hat on it. Put a mouth in there. It looks but like it, me too, don't it? You can reach, you can take that and reach down inside his mouth and get hold of your hook and pull it out. And it, they're real good. They're, they're better cheap. than loosening a finger, right? Now, now, I know me and you were talking before the <laughs> show. Not we have, you have a local guy who's making a product now who you guys are going to be talking to. I'm not going to oh, say yeah. the name. I'm going to keep my mouth quiet. He's going to be here today, and I told him to stop in here and talk to you guys, and let's Ooh, get everything straight. So, uh, anyway, Roman, we'll see you in a little bit. Um, so, uh, so we, we need some pliers, you know, to get our bait back if we're going to do that. Um, now, here's the thing. I caught my fish and I decided, I, look, it is legal in the state, you guys are gonna love it when I say this. It is legal in the state of Maryland for you to release your fish. It is not against the law, okay? Well, so I if you don't wanna keep yeah. your fish, you can let it go, but you have to let it go at that same exact location. Let me tell you what, DNR is out there and they are hiding, they are watching. I'm gonna tell you how I know. What happened? March 1st, we were out there, first week of March anyway, me and Corn Flower were down New Bridge and I hooked a giant bass like this. Now look, we eat a bass every now and then. I'm not gonna say that we don't, you know, and especially cornflower. Cornflower eats crows, you know what I mean? So, you know, a bass is probably like gourmet to him instead of a crow. So, uh, you know, anyway, so I handed him the bass and he goes, uh, yeah, I I'll take it home. And uh, within two minutes, one of our local DNR, which, which we get along with all of them, we love them, right. they're doing their job. You know, he pulled down to us and he says, where's that bass? Of the cornflower said, he was watching us somewhere with a hokey dunk in the woods. What do you think about that, huh? <laughs> right? So uh, I, I said, I said, corn flour truck, and he's going to take it home. He goes, bass season's not open. I said, no, bass season's still open. 
And that's the thing. Sometimes our officers aren't going to know everything, especially somebody who's new. So here's yeah, the thing. Right? Yeah, to, 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 yeah, we're in brackish too. So to make a moron out of somebody, that's not the way to be with the Department of Natural Resources. Anybody who's out there trying to be our friend, whether you like it or not, right. you know, they, they, they may not really want to be our friend. But you know, we need to treat them kind. We need to treat them with respect. You know? yes, so, uh, so you know, you know, he said, he said, well, I didn't know that. He said, you know what, Cass? Thanks. You just told me something today. I've had a couple NRP officers down there stop on the side of the road we're pulling mini traps because they're not familiar with all the baits that you can keep and you can't keep. Some of them they don't, they're not familiar with. So, yeah, especially you know, with that area, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I take time out of my day when they stop to sit there for 30 minutes and go through each fish and say, hey, this is this, this is an LY, I'm not keeping this. This is a, a migratory fish, I'm not keeping this. This is a spotted blue, we don't have any of them at all. You know, that way they see that you're just not out there cleaning out the ditch to sell some bait. You're out right. there doing what you need to do not only sell bait, but to protect, to protect the resource for the future. So I've got my snakeheads, they're caught. What am I gonna do next? I decide I wanna keep it. I don't wanna let it go. A cooler, I hope you brought a cooler. We've gotta bring out a cooler. So make sure yep. you got a cooler and a bag of ice. So look, so what DNR wants you to do, okay, is they want this snakehead to be euthanized before you leave your spot. Here's the deal, folks. No, Seven not before you leave your spot. Well, after you catch it, put it in the pool. I'm sorry. Yeah. You catch it. You're uh, putting yeah. it in immediately. the pool. Immediately. Yep. You have to kill it immediately. You don't want it moving in there. If you leave your said spot and your fish are not dead, here's what's going to happen because it's happening a lot right now. DNR's watching. They're going to stop you if they think you didn't kill your fish. They're going to take your cooler and they're going to set it on the ground. And look, they're just doing their job, man. If you do your job, you don't have to worry about this. They're going to put the cooler down. They're going to take your fish out. They're going to poke it with a little poking stick. If those fins raise or that fish flops or that fish is considered still alive, $750. Oh, man. Your license is gone like a DUI. You're going to go to court. You're going to fight to get it back. It's going to cost you big time money to the judge. And this is why they did that. This is what, federal court? No, no, this no, is this state. Is state. Federal, state. No, federal, federal, federal is Lacey Act. So here in the state level now, we're taking your license. Now you're going to have to go to court. You have to take some education classes we're going to set up for you so you understand why you don't transport invasive species. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it's going to cost you a lot of money. And the reason we did this, okay, everybody wanted to play the game when we had the first law in about you, if you don't kill them, you know, you're going to get this, right? Right. You see you releasing them, you're going to get this. So what happened was when we started going to court to enforce the violations, and, and I understand, you know, you got lawyers down saying, hey, it, it's against my client's uh, religion to kill something he's not going to eat. The judge can't fight that, okay? That's you're protected under your constitutional rights, you know what I mean? So a lot of the money and a lot of the effort that was put in the first couple of years of trying to corner these guys, you know, it was without nothing. We wasted the money. So how can we effectively move forward, present it to the public where it's not so, it's cut and dry, you know what I mean? Right. There's no more of this or that. You so do it, your license is gone, you're gonna have to go to classes just like you would a DUI. Once you graduate, we'll give you a license back. You don't want to, I don't look like that in front of my boss, I can tell you that, or my right. friends, you know? So, just don't transport, that's the bottom line. Well, here's Plus, the, here's I don't think I can thing. be without a license for you, you know? <laughs> I gotta be here's out another thing, you'll be too. out for the rest of your if, life. If you're on federal land, you have broken the Lacey Act, which is an Invasive Species Act, that can be a $10,000 fine and time in jail. And I, I have a friend in the city for business got a ticket going into New York for $200,000 oh because he did not know that even if your snake has dead, they are not allowed in the state of New York. Period. Ooh. Okay. So don't play him with this stuff. Yeah. So I caught my fish. I want to take him home. DNR wants you to euthanize the fish. So how do I euthanize my fish? There's many ways you can kill a snake, but the most effective way, and we sell a product called the Chanted Eye Chopper, which is whack. Oh, cool, I've seen time. that. Yeah. It looks pretty cool. So here's the thing. <laughs> you can cut the gill arches. The fish still live. They got an air bladder. They can breathe. Well, exactly. Breathe. People okay. don't know that. Well, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. So we, we had to make some changes here yeah. too. You know, after looking at everything going on, we decided this. You must, as long as that spinal cord is severed, if you've come behind the head and gone right through the spinal cord, it's considered dead, even if it twitches with the poke stick. So if you want to get around the poke stick, the poke stick, which is hashtag the poke stick, huh? If you, want to, around, yeah, right? if you want to get around the poke stick, just sever the spinal cord and, and everything's done. You ain't got no questions, no problems, you know? And I know you've got a video up we did on Blackwater's Edge and on snakeheadlife.com of the channel eye chopper and how effective it is. We, we made this tool so that when you, when you smack, when, when you chop, I guess, chop when, you, when, you chop, when you chop the snake head, the blade only goes down about this this much. Gary, Gary's a great builder, a great designer, everything. He makes all kinds of things. The bump boards for you guys and things like that, you know? So, trial and error, we're trying to figure out how does this blade need to be to sever the cord? You know, what do we need so that we're not punching through the fish and cutting the whole head off? Because that was right. happening in the beginning. So, what Gary it's, did... It's thicker. Yeah. So, what Gary but did it's is... Got, it's got a, a, a blade on it, but the blade's only 
about three eighths of an inch long. And so it's, and it's not real sharp, it's made out of aluminum. Right. So it, it, it does what you want it to do, but it doesn't cut the fish in half. It's not going to just right. completely, yeah. you know. I mean, you want your fish to still be edible. Right, you don't right. want to but smash you know, it all over, you know? There's a gazillion ways. You can take a, a little hammer and whack them on the head. I mean, some people take a knife and stab them in the, in the top of the head like they do with catfish. It's just that the, the thing is, if you get caught with a fish and there's been no attempt to try to kill it, you can always, always argue attempt. Right. You know, if, if it happens to wiggle a little bit. You get a court look, I tried to kill it, I guess I didn't do the right thing, I gotta change the way I'm Let doing it. Let me ask you guys. But if this. you haven't done anything. Now can you fillet the fish out there? Keep the fillets and then just throw the the, the rest of it in the water? Will that be a thing? No, no. I don't I don't think you can. Yeah, yes you can. And the only reason I know that is because not Ma cooked. Mary Harshman mm -hmm. and uh, I forget who it was. Uh, they were cleaning their fish at drawbridge on the side of the road and put it in the cooler and when the DMR came by he didn't know what they were doing so he got out went through everything and when he saw the carcasses and he saw yeah, the I, meat you know he knows what the meat looks right. like i think that's the thing i would highly recommend you keep the carcasses because it's like rock yeah. fish you're not allowed to fillet rock fish on the boat gotcha you know and if he comes down there you could probably get a ticket you could probably still beat it but who wants to go to court and yeah. argue I mean, this is the thing. Just, I mean, I, I think, I think we've really taken an opportunity here to try to educate the people exactly. a little bit more. I mean, a lot of people just don't know a lot of these rules. So it's, a it's, lot our, of them too. Yeah, yeah. it's our responsibility because we know mm -hmm. to carry that message to the next guy because exactly. we don't want anybody getting in trouble. You know it's, what I mean? It's just like Blackwood Refuge, for instance, uh, 335, the loans there. And I think it's already in effect from, it's either April 1st or April 15th, I can't remember. You can't go under the bridge and fish towards the refuge. You can only go upriver. Yeah, I mean, it's real important to, 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 to check your local laws. Check exactly. out where you can and can't go. Uh, here's a good story. So we got a friend down there that has, has a cattle farm. And, uh, you know, we got a call one day and he says, Hey, man, he says, you tell some guys come over here fishing my, 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 my sewage pond? I said, no, what's going on? He says, I don't know. Got a bunch of guys out here in kayaks sitting, floating around in my, uh, my poop pool for my, uh, my cows. I guess they're trying <laughs> to find some fish. So sure enough, he walked down these guys, two guys in the kayak in his cesspool, whatever you want to call it. They're throwing frogs through the poop and everything. They think it's some kind of weed that just died in oh, brown on the top, you know what I mean? It doesn't smell because they keep it treated, you know right. what I'm saying? So he walks out and says, you guys doing anything? He said, nah, we're trying to catch some snakeheads. He goes, I don't even catch any snakeheads in there, but if you like cow patties, you can probably make a couple of them out of there. He says, what do you mean? He says, Dude, you're swimming in the cow poop pool, man. There ain't no fish in there. Can't nothing live in there. They both looked at each other and said the other guy's buddy almost freaked out so bad he rolled the kayak there. He was hoping that he did so he could take a picture anyway. So, That's you know, so you don't trespass. You know, if you don't belong there, don't go there. This is another big thing. You hear about this. No matter whether you're a snakehead fisherman, a bass fisherman, side of the road fisherman, trash. Oh, you know, yeah. All the time trash. If you didn't bring your mother, your maid, take your trash with you, please. That's what we're talking about. I should take a couple bags. Yeah, we yeah. were just, 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 just talking yeah. about this a few minutes ago. Maryland's not a public access state. Maine is. Maine, you can hunt or fish anywhere that's not posted. That's not the case in Maryland. Mm -hmm. Maryland, you can still get a ticket and be fine for being on private property. And it's just whether it's posted, whether it's not. Yeah, I mean, you know? I mean, really, it's about are you a grown yeah. man or are you a kid? I mean, exactly. really, I mean, it's, it's about being That's responsible. one of the things that I always say myself. If I, if I don't know, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. You know, like, if it's if it's public or not, if I'm not sure, even if it is public, I'm not going to do it. Just like I tell people, don't give your kids everything they want. Teach them everything that you weren't taught. You know exactly. what I mean? So, I mean, that's the biggest thing, you know, trying to make sure that, that we're, we're helping our future out because these young bucks and these people that are coming out, that's the future for Angler Sports. That's the future for all these mom pop companies. Yep. So, the best thing to do is to bring the community together, whether you catch fish, kill fish, eat fish, give them to your neighbor. Look, what are you doing with them, right? <laughs> look, I got friends that are Democrats, friends that are re Republicans. I'm not a political guy. I tell them, look, I'm not getting involved with all that. You're my friend and you have good intentions. Me and you are money. Yeah. And look, if you're a release guy and your heart's pure, me and you are money. I'm yeah. not that guy. So I want to squash that today here. You know, we're here to help everybody, you know. And, exactly. and we've done that since day one, no matter who you are, you know. That's the thing with fishing brings everybody together, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's, it's about fishing. It's not right? about separating the community. And there's exactly. too much division going on in this whole snakehead thing right now. So I think it's very important for these guys that are at the top, you know, to, to start making the impression to say, hey, you know what? No matter who you are, we love you. You know, no matter who you are, I want to fish with you. Exactly. No matter who you are, I want to pass on to you the things that mean something to me. Exactly. You know? it's, the same, it's the same way in the whole community. Oh, yeah. Know, it's, it's just, 
fishing, hunt, any any sport, it's, it's always that. It's how the world should be, right? <laughs> People need to just get along. Do the next right thing. It's not yeah. that hard. One thing man. different, probably with fishing, more so than hunting, is almost all fishing, unless you're in somebody's private pond, is public access. Yeah. And and, and hunting's not necessarily that way. You know, you can have private land on hunting. I've yeah. got a pond in my yard. It's not public access, but that's one of the few places that aren't private ponds mill ponds, things like that. The rest of the waters are, are public access, and people need to have to learn and, how to and, 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 I, and I can say this, you know, I'm sure you've seen the videos of what we're seeing in the nets right now. We haven't even started the season yet, okay? So, uh, you know, our, our, fir our first net, net outing, you know, we had uh, quite a few hundred pounds. Um, and then last week, you know, early in the week, it got cold again. So there wasn't anything in the nets, you know? So, uh, so was it Thursday? I think it was, thir I think yeah, it was Thursday cool. when we had a seven degree day. Yeah. So, you know, in the morning when we went out, you know, there wasn't much in the nets. So we just figured we'd wait a little bit and see if the sun did anything. Now, this is the God's honest truth. There was no snakeheads in our first net at all in the morning. So this warms up, right? By 4 o'clock, I ain't kidding you, we drove by and we were like carp jumping out of the water. It was all snakes. <laughs> you know? So here, here, here's my forecast for Blackwater this year. Did we see a decrease in some fish caught yet last year? Yeah, I think so. And I think that was because of a lot of bait being removed, a lot of food source being removed, the snakeheads were moving around. We saw them pick up in the chick, we saw them pick up in the trans, we saw them kind of drop off in Blackwater in some spots. Some other spots in Blackwater were amazing. It's all about where you go. If you're gonna keep going to the same spot over and over and over, remember what I said, these are smart fish. Yeah. All you're doing is giving them an education, you know what I'm saying? So uh, move that. around, yeah. move around, check it out. You know, I mean, numbers wise, I'm seeing more numbers right now. They're there. Size wise. Corn flower got 18 and a half pounder last week. I've had them in the nets up to 16 and 16.4 already. I'm sure okay? the world record's out there, right? So here's the thing, you know, you know corn flower, he talks and talks and talks. He swears to God to me that he hooked that big one. And two casts later, he had another one bigger than that. I said, <laughs> get out of here, man. This is not a corn story, man. He said, now nah, I'm being serious. So I, I can guarantee he's probably been living in that place like a dog around yes. the clock for the last week. Because if he's being serious, that's where he'll be. I can tell you that right now. I think we're going to see the record come. Where oh, it's yeah. going to be, I don't know. I, I really think that the Upper Bay has a good shot at it, only because of Aberdeen Proven Ground, off limits water, and plenty of snakeheads in there. Romney Creek, is choked, too, yeah. Yeah, Romney Creek is so choked with snakeheads, it's not even going to either, either be a place like that or somebody that has a private pond that uh -huh. has people who snake in that doesn't get fished. Well, Charlotte, we was one Charlotte show, caught a 14 and a half pound with yeah. in, in a private pond. Yeah. Just, you know. People on Edward couldn't believe it. But we, you know, we, they we, get we in there, to... they're going to eat everything in there. But so a lot of people locally in the community have seen the work that we've done, you know, you know, and how concerned we are about like wood ducks and things like that. So I know this year we're going to be working on some ponds for some people, and I think we're going to be pretty surprised at what we find in these ponds, just because they've never been fished. Oh, exactly. And yeah. these are impoundments, you know, that guys that are raising ducks and things like that for release RSAs and stuff, you know. And we've offered our services to them, you know, not to make money. Just to help out. You know, if he needs yeah. to go there for a day and take three of my friends and try to get the pond knocked down so not eating wood ducks, then that's what we're going to do. You know, so. Uh, well, you, t you talk about you're a big bait fisherman. I'm not a big bait yeah, fisherman. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I, I did start fishing last year for snakeheads with menace, and I do early on. In another two weeks, I'm straight out from here till September. Being on the horse. Uh, top of Yeah. I, I love that blow up, man. Hey, we all dream about that. We all dream about that. Nothing cool to see one come out and dance across from here to that truck over there across the water oh, yeah. in, in mid-April, the 1st of May when uh, the water's And that's down. another thing. I call it the dance. You know, have the you had, have you right? had that yep. opportunity? Yeah, so, so look, especially the big ones. You know? My first big snakehead that I ever caught at Aries Road, this is no lie, this is in November, and it was cold. I hooked this fish over here on the side of the river, and it wound up being, I think, it wasn't was big, it was like nine pounds. But it corpus like a dolphin from one side to the other, just trying to throw that hook. Every time it would come out, you would see it. It was almost like, like yeah. yeah, I mean, it would come out and shake his head, and it just kept doing that across the whole river. And that's a cool thing It was thing the most magnificent thing I ever saw in my life. So it I do can, say yeah. good things about snakeheads. Yeah. You see it? Snakehead can come his body length and half out of the water easy. Oh, and yeah. we were, my nephew and I were fishing uh, uh, one of the places that, that I have access to. It's, it's private land, but public water. And it was a duck box there. They put those metal guards on them. And this guard is, is this high out of water. We have one jump out and land on top of that. Rang it like a bell <laughs> and fell back in the water. And his whole body was on, on top of that. So he, he jumped better than a foot out of the water. Jeez. I don't know about you how we were on time, but this has been one heck, oh, of, a, heck of a great time today. No, I think we're forgetting one thing. Yes. So look.
I don't know what blood type you are, but just keep in mind they moved <laughs> the hospital. It's not in North Chester County. And it's, not, it's not up in town anymore. They moved the new pavilion out on 50. So if you need a blood donation because you were too in, in, enthralled in the fish and you couldn't get away, I do it all the time. Look how skinny I'll be so skinny I can hold hoop through a Cheerio. You watch. So look, uh, make sure you got bug spray with you. A thermocell oh is a great friend too. I like to wear two, one on each side, and if I need a third, you tip right on my hat. Oh yeah, I'll go oh, take a one thermocell tree. So uh, yeah, once the sun comes yeah. up, if you're in the sunshine, you don't have much problem with the bugs. But in the morning, or coming, if, if you're coming back at light, you better have some bugs. Back. Now, guys, what, what's the time of the year when you eat this? Like, I mean, when does it start now? From, hey. from now, a warm day, day in eat. December until a cold until so, a cold day in November. 65. <laughs> yeah, much. Here's the thing. I mean, like. In February, the first week, we had that little warm snap, and I was making videos on my reels of letting those mosquitoes bite me. You know, you can actually see them oh, drinking I've, the I've been lit up deer hunting. Yeah. You know, in, in December, right? you get a warm day when there's no wind. This is not just there. Like Common yeah. Code, Talbot, all of them places, anywhere you're in that marsh, you know, the Air Force is going to be there. They're going to pick you up, and they're going to suck you dry. So. Every time I go there, like when I'm coming back at night, and you can just hear them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that oh, sound, yeah. I mean. But well, you want to hear something funny? Years ago, you couldn't hear that. You heard frogs. Really? Pre snake head, yeah. Like where where I hunt down at home. And you're absolutely right. I mean we stand out in the field yeah. and you can hear the hum, you know, right down the ditch if you're there at the right time. You can hear them just humming in there. We do have a question here, guys, on Facebook okay. Live. Okay. Um, we do need to wrap up soon to get yeah, on to the next seminar. Yes. But before we do, John Sweeney would like for you to talk a little bit about fishing in rivers with current. Okay, so current. So let's talk about the Susquehanna River, okay? We got that getting ready to bust loose, lots oh, yeah, of current that's there. Happen here. They're gonna cut some spill gates open, you know. I don't know if you've seen the stuff I posted last year with the, the fish lift and what's right, going on. And how many yep. snakeheads they're catching oh, down man. on the shoreline. I mean, them guys were That's catching insane. hundreds a day, okay, when they came. Every year, snakeheads go up anybody water they're in, chasing bait, chasing a food source. Everybody thinks because they want to run. That's not yeah. necessarily what it is. They're moving with food. You know, they got to eat. They're hungry. Right. So, uh, you know, if I'm in a river and I see, like, something sticking out in the current to create a little eddy, or an edge, I call it. A big it. rock. Yeah. Edges is what you will look for. And when I say and edge, points, you'll see right? lines. No, no, no. An edge, what I mean is you got a rock here and you'll see two current lines coming off. And those are edges. So where are those snakehead going to be behind that rock? They're going to be inside both of those lines. Right. So always try to take a bait and throw it into the current and let it pull back into that calm spot. Do it on both sides. Okay. So that way I've got that hole covered and now I'm free to fish behind the rock. You know what I mean? So here's the thing. Rivers are great places because if they're there and you got two minnows hanging outside and you can tease them with a lure and get them hungry, it's nothing but a matter of minutes before one of these rods go down. Points. I'm fishing a point. Again, the current line. I don't want to be on the downside of the point. I want to be on the upside of the point. Exactly. I want to, again, fish that current break coming off of that point. That's where that fish is going to be. They, want, they don't want that resistance, okay? When they turn them waters on up there and push them back down, they go up Deer Creek and they go up Octa to get out of that current. A lot of them stay there. A lot of people right. don't know that, you know. So check them rivers out up there. There's lots of good fishing there. Yeah. You know? Fishing in current is is very similar to fishing in in real calm rivers. In real calm rivers, you're looking for structure, trees hanging over the water or a dead tree in the water, something like that. But special stuff hanging over, you can cast up underneath of it. The difference in in fast moving water is you look for something sticking up out of the water that creates a calm spot behind it. Yep. Like you said, those, yeah, you know, those yeah, trees breaks hanging right over through the water there. doesn't yep. help you. You want something sticking up out of the water. You know, it's not, well, once they're up, they're awake and you get a cold snap, it's not too much about temperature in rivers. It's more about finding that nice calm spot where I can take a break, grab me some heat, give me some energy, and get up the river some more. You know, so just keep that yep. in mind. I hope that helps you. Yep, all right, guys. Well, I think we cover everything here for the essentials and whatnot. Three Musketeers <laughs> done it again, huh? Thank you, Cass. Thank you, guys, for being here. Thanks, really Lindsay. Thanks, it. Anglers. Thank you, guys. Oh, look, before we go, tournaments. Tournaments, before I forget. Oh, yeah. Anglers tournament here in July. Make sure you come, okay? The next tournament, we had our tournament down Blackwater yesterday. Yep. Had 36, 36 people in there. No, yeah, uh, 30 people in, eight fish. Tough 30 day. people in, eight fish, tough, tough day, day, no water. But the guys that won all cast a check over $1,500. Oh, man. So, you know, that's what was the biggest thing this thing? I think Snakehead was five and a half pounds. Five, I think it was 5.6. Well, that, 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 was that Ricky? That was Ricky had that? No, I think it was all one. Uh, the biggest, uh, oh, the Jonathan's yeah. name. So the next tournament is going to be where? Next tournament, Upper Bay? Yeah, the next tournament's Upper Bay at Port Deposit. That's uh -huh. next month, May 14th, I think. 14th of May. Uh, then we have June at Dundee Creek Marina. We'll be doing that with the Maryland Waterways Foundation. 
Then in July, we'll be down here with the Angler Sports Center. It's going to be huge. We're going to have food trucks. We're going to have booths set up. Oh, nice. There's going to be ways for you to, you know, get a booth through through Anglers and sell a product if you're, you know, in the gotcha. custom build or something like that. This is about bringing the community together, but also to showcase the expansion of the snakehead around the state. The other good thing is we'll have two biologists from DNR here go. at Anglers, Beth and Jim, and we're going to gut sample the fish so the public can see, Ooh. just like we did at Dundee. So we had hundreds, of, there, hundreds right? of people watching. <laughs> We want to show people what they're eating. And you know, y'all can say they eat the same thing a bass does. It's not so much that, it's the amount of food source required for a 14 pound snakehead versus our average two and a half pound. You can, you can catch a bass today that ate two days ago and you can see what's in it. You can catch a snakehead that ate yesterday, it's nothing in it. And, and you know, Your I think- It's so fast, yeah. yeah. I think Chad Wells says it you know, the best, you know, if, if you can't beat them, eat them. And if you want, <laughs> and if you want to have rockfish here in 20 years, Eat a snakehead now, right. you know? So let's do this. Alrighty, guys. Well, we Thank appreciate you guys. it. Thank you. Thank you.